Um, when lots of different lists were going around anonymously accusing loads of different men in different industries of you know varying degrees of abuse. And I say varying degrees of abuse because what I've noticed is that almost everyone I speak to does um, mention that Michael's accused of sexual assault, right? But Michael is accused of physical assault and he's accused of uh, harassment and he, you know the restraining order thing. But what I one of the reasons I wanted to make sure he wasn't accused of sexual assault is because I think by the nature of appearing on a list like that, it almost doesn't matter what it says. The reality is anyone, myself, anyone in this room would see that someone is basically grouped in with men that have done, you know, like, um, you know, crimes of a sexual nature or physical assault or whatever, and kind of assume that they are, they've also done something quite similar. So I just thought, this is a really interesting conversation because on the one hand being a feminist I was like oh my god this is my knee-jerk reaction is this is an amazing thing like this is important um and in many ways I still feel that way that this is something that you know is necessary because so few women have been able to hold their abusers accountable whether that's because they've been failed by um HR or the police or um you know the legal system so that was kind of my initial reaction but underneath that I, there was a discomfort for context, I studied law at university and I used to work at Channel 4 News where we're like bound by Ofcom regulation. So before you can report on anything, there has to be a real sort of solid, um, yeah, I guess there has to be some fact checking. There has to be a really rigorous process before you sort of publicize or attach anyone's name to anything. So I did feel slightly uncomfortable um, and wanted to interrogate that. So I wanted to write a long form non-fiction where my you know my safety net long fiction article basically you know asking these questions interviewing people and seeing where i suppose whether it was an ethical approach um and then that was in 2017 and i think that was still very much in the throes of me too and it still felt like it was maybe too fraught to be doing that right then so i kind of shelved the idea came back to it in 2018 as a play um, I don't know, I'd always bring up the play, but I'm like, there's nothing to say about the play because it was such a terrible play. Um, that I'd like know. to see it in the play. <laughs> <laughs> oh, trust me, you wouldn't. <laughs> I guarantee you wouldn't. Um, unless it was to love it. It was, it was really bad. And um, I shelved it again. And then it was locked down. And I always say that, like, as I mentioned, I'm not, I'm not the greatest of cooks. <laughs> so everyone else was like making banana bread and like doing all these recipes and stuff. And I was like, oh, I had this idea in 2018 and I wanted to look at... Um, you know, the ethics of the situation and maybe it's something that's easier or it's easier to have the conversation. It definitely wasn't easier to, to write, but it's easier to have the conversation in fiction. So then, yeah, I just, you know, had endless amount of time. We didn't know when we were getting out of lockdown. And yeah, someone said there's like a new genre, which is just like lockdown book. <laughs> it's just like, this is very much a lockdown book. Yeah. 